All right, guys, we're going to look at Acts chapter 28 today. This is the last chapter of the book of Acts, and several different things happen. So we're not going to finish Acts today, but we're in the last chapter today. We're just going to look at the first um, first 10 verses. Okay, remember they had a shipwreck. All of chapter 27 is basically the story of what survives a shipwreck and everything else doesn't. Um, looked at that yesterday. So chapter 28 they, they float to shore. They swim to shore, whatever. Here they are on shore. And we were brought safely through, verse 1, when we learned that the island was called, and uh, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us unusual kindness. and stuff. It's cold, it's rainy, so they built a fire. Okay, Paul is gathering sticks. Uh, verse 3, Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire. A viper, a po- a viper means poisonous snake, uh, came out because of the heat and fastened onto his hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Um, and uh, though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. Okay, they think, um, you know, he, he's a prisoner and God, the, the gods or whatever are going to kill him. Justice is going to kill him with the snake. However, he shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a god. All right, just superstition. It's kind of, I kind of chuckle about it, but it's, it's sad. Um, in that neighborhood, verse 7, uh, there were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius. He received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and prayed and put his hands on him and healed him. When this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases came and were cured. And they honored us greatly. When we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. All right, so that's what we'll look at today. Uh, Remarkable. I mean, they, they survived the shipwreck. They're building a fire. Paul gets bitten by a poisonous snake. I mean, it's just this random little miracle that just pops up here. Everywhere Paul goes, he's a missionary. Everywhere he goes, he ha- he looks for opportunities. He takes opportunities to share the gospel, to heal, to to speak God's word. When he's on a, sh- a prison ship in the middle of a storm and it's it's falling apart and ready to sink, guess what he's doing? He's telling them about Jesus. He's telling them what to do. When they land and a poisonous snake bites him and he's healed, he'll go heal somebody else. The snake bit his hand. He laid that hand on this guy who was sick and dying, and and it's healing. So instead of spreading poison and death, poison and death, when it touches Paul, the poison and death falls off and burns in a fire. Paul lives and spreads healing with the same hand. It's, it's It's a small little example of... The miraculous power of God, that where God goes, what is death gives life. Death spread through all men because one man sinned, right? Because of, of Adam. And the same way righteousness now spreads. Jesus lays hands on leprosy, on, on lepers. And instead of them spreading leprosy to him, he spreads his healing to them. Paul, in the same way, does it here. And of course, the snake and the poison and all that has a symbol of Satan and the Garden of Eden and temptation and, and all this stuff, it symbolizes all that. It burns in a fire, burns in hell. And meanwhile, Paul is out spreading the good news of Jesus. All right. Um, and they, they honored him greatly. They're there for three months. It doesn't say that a lot of people uh, came to Christ. It doesn't say that a church was planted there. But three months is, is it's, it's kind of a long time for Paul to be sitting in one place. So I don't know exactly what happened. It seems that a lot of people on the island who had diseases were cured. All of them who had diseases um, were cured. Sounds to me like uh, like the good news was being preached. Sounds to me like the gospel was was being spread here, right? Um, are you are you ready? Are you ready to spread the gospel anywhere, anytime? In the midst of a shipwreck, and you're, you're homeless, it's cold, uh, you're on a, a strange island you've never been to, and here's the chance to teach people of Jesus. Are you ready for that? Are you prepared for that? Um, what holds you back? What, um, what stops you? 
you know, you were just waiting for everything to settle down and, and cool off a little bit and, and get your mind straightened out. And then maybe we'll have time for this. I mean, Paul, Paul has, doesn't have a day of rest, man. He, he doesn't even, it's one thing to the next. He's a prisoner. He's on a ship. It, it wrecks. He hits, he hits land and a snake bites him. And, and then he's laying hands and healing somebody. He always wants to advance God's kingdom. I said he doesn't get a day of rest. That sounds like he doesn't take a Sabbath. I assume he's taking his Sabbaths. I assume he is. Doesn't really give a ton of detail about that. I don't know. Side issue anyway for me right now. Um, he is eager to get the gospel out. He doesn't care that this was unplanned, that this was not what he had in mind. He always wanted to go to Rome. Now he's, he's, on, he's in a shipwreck on the way to Rome. Well, whatever. I'll... Uh, Guess I'll just be a minister of the gospel where I'm at. While he's on the ship, he's a minister of the gospel. It doesn't matter that he's a prisoner. It doesn't matter that things aren't going the way he would have intended. The gospel's being spread. What does it make? What difference does it make how it's being spread? What difference does it make uh, if if he, it matches up to his personal preferences? All right. I, uh, I I don't I don't know if there's a, a clear direct application here. I guess if you get bitten by a poisonous snake, use it for the glory of God, right? Um, but uh, but broadly speaking, let's be ready. Let's be ready at all times to preach the gospel. Can you tell somebody the gospel right now? What's the gospel? Just hit pause. Say explain the gospel out loud right now to to, to your back to your computer screen. Can you do it? What 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 is the gospel? How would you spread it? If, if, if a total stranger came up to you and said, hey, what do I need to know about Jesus? 30 seconds, go. What would you say? On the spot, unplanned, middle of your busy day, you got a lot of things on your mind, you got a hundred things on your list to, to do, your to-do list, what's the gospel? Go for it. Are you prepared? Are you ready to do it? Um, the gospel is good news. It's not a ministry. It's not a program. It's not a church. It doesn't it's 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 news. Do you, do you ever spread the news? Do you say, hey, did you did you hear what President Trump was did at the thing? Did you hear about the uh, the riot that broke out? Did you hear about the the coronavirus thing? Whatever. We got so much news right now. Did you hear about everybody shares the news? Everybody talks about the news. Everybody knows the news. Everybody spreads the news. All right. The news, the Good news, what's the good news, the eternally good news that will still be good in a trillion years after everybody else is dead and gone and today's news cycle is over? That's why it's called a news cycle. It just goes on and on. It never really ends. But the good news stays the same. It's not going to be new news tomorrow. It's not going to um, be updated and, and yesterday's story is obsolete and we found out more facts and uh, it turns out that wasn't. No, the good news, the gospel is eternally valuable. And can you share it? Can you spread it? It's news. It's not meant to be complicated. It's meant to be news. Okay. Um, there's forgiveness of sins. It's available. Repent of your sin. Ask Jesus to forgive you. And in Jesus' name, he died for you. He took the penalty of your sin and he offers you eternal life. Give your life to Jesus. Repent of your own life. Turn yourself in in and give yourself to Jesus. And that's the gospel. It's good news. It's great news. It's incredible news. I said it it's kind of matter of factly here because I'm, I'm kind of teaching it to you or something maybe. But uh, can you get excited about it? Does it excite you? Does does Is it good news? Is it really exciting news? Because typically we share good news. Typically we, we share bad news too. Um, oftentimes I think we're so eager to share bad news. Oh, did you hear the latest coronavirus numbers? So blah blah blah. We get all nervous about it. Let's let's spread some good news. Let's know it. Let's spread it. My goodness, eternal life. Eternal life is available. It's just free because Jesus died for you. You don't have to feel guilt. You don't have to feel anxiety. You don't have to feel worry, frustration, nervousness, any of the inadequacy. And you know, oh, I'm nobody. I'm useless. The world hates me, whatever nonsense. You don't have to. It's good news, guys. It's, it's good news. It's exciting news. Jesus loves you. Son of God. Who would it? The Son of God 
lives, he's alive, he came to earth, he loves me, he died for me. That's exciting. He gave his life for, for mine and, and traded my inadequate nonsense life and gives me his eternally, eternally valuable, eternally important life. That's, a, that's pretty good news, right? Let's talk about that. Let's spread that. Um, if, I don't know if you'll ever be shipwrecked on an island getting bitten by a poisonous snake, but I hope if you do, I hope you spread the gospel when you're there. And since you probably won't be shipwrecked, it probably won't be put on a total crazy island you never heard of, and probably won't be bitten by a poisonous snake, then I hope you share the gospel down in your own neighborhood where everything's going well. Okay, <laughs> he's, he's able to do it when it's not going well. Um, praise the Lord. Let's get the gospel. Let's spread the gospel. Let's spread the good news. God bless you.